Welcome back to the HSC Network podcast, everyone. This week, we've got a real treat. We're joined by Matt Taylor, HSC Director of British Steel. We're going to be looking at the transformation process in health and safety, how we can get businesses from point A to point B to point C and really drive forward good health and safety change. So thanks very much for joining us, Matt. Could you start by giving us an introduction maybe as to what you mean when you say transformation in health and safety? Yeah, sure. I mean, um, for me, transformation is going from point A to point B. And it's as, it's as simple as that. When, when people talk about transformation in health and safety, there's, there's multiple different levels to look at. But it's essentially taking yourself from one place to another, from a, from a bad place to a good place, or from a good place to an even better place. If you want to be you know, a, a, an excellent performer, um, then you need to you need to go to a good place. So when people talk about health and safety transformation, it's just about moving from from one place to another. And to give you some some context to that, like I get asked quite often um, to come in and, and and give give a company a, a health and safety transformation plan. And one of the first questions I ask is, well, where are you? What are you trying to measure yourself against? What are you benchmarking yourself against? And most of the time they don't know. So part of the, the transformation plan is actually finding out where you are, um, understanding where you are as well, and then where you want to get to and putting a plan in place to kind of get from point A to point B. And it's as simple as that. So when you go into a company to talk about how they're going to transform, what are some of the initial steps you take to try and work out where they are? One of, the, one of the very first things that I do is um, I'll go in and I'll, I'll understand their current position. So with that, I mean, health and safety in general uses um, statistics as a measure of whether they're good or bad. Um, <clears throat> so I, I quite often go through their, their safety statistics for the last five years. Um, I try and understand where the the their weaknesses are and where there can be improvements and once once we once we establish that we we move forward and actually start looking at well where are you against your competitors where are you against the best performers in your industry um, and that's when we really look at benchmarking and understand where where the company a is against company b um, we look at um, what the people do. Um, we try and understand at various different levels what the responsibilities for health, safety, and environmental uh, aspects within that business are. Um, and again, we benchmark. So we make sure that what they are doing is what they, are, what they say they're doing um, and what they need to be doing in terms of what the, the CEO or the managing director of that company expects them to do. Um, and we also then look at other companies and say, well, a, a manager in company X actually does far more health and safety um, roles and responsibilities than what we're doing. Let's look at how we can, we can match that or do the same or do better. Are there any sort of companies that you hold up as a, a bit of a standard when it comes to good health and safety management? It depends what industry you're in, because there, there is industry leaders in every sector. Um, so what, what I tend to do is, is I tend to go right to the top and see who is the best performer in any sector. And depending on the company, they, they may want to match the performance of said company. Um, they may not. They may, you know, they may say that, well, they, these guys are absolutely excellent in health and safety. They're having no incidents. They're having no environmental impact and they're not hurting people. Um, but they've got the budget to spend a lot of money on health and safety. So some companies don't have that. Um, but the good thing is that companies want to improve. And if a company wants to improve, then they're moving in the right direction, whether that is, you know, if they've got the right budget for it or not, there is things you can do to improve health and safety without spending a lot of money. And that's mainly just people doing what they're meant to be doing, being held to account on what they're meant to be doing and then measuring against that. Yeah. 
Hundred percent. I suppose getting people that that buy-in from companies to improve their health and safety, like you say, is, is the initial challenge. What? Yeah. What are some of the ways that you try and get companies on board with improving it if they maybe haven't seen the light yet? Well, the, the good thing is that most companies approach me to come and help them, mm. so they're already on that journey. Um, but I guess in terms of getting people getting people to to buy into health and safety is, you know. Health and safety professionals will always come across people who just do not want to, to engage in any sort of health and safety um, roles or responsibilities. And they're the, they're, they're the people that, you know, have maybe had bad experiences in the past or don't actually realise the benefit of doing the right thing or doing what they're meant to be doing and how it can help them. <clears throat> so one of the techniques that I use is actually go in and sitting down with these people and um, trying to understand why they they don't feel the need to engage in, in health and safety duties or responsibilities and actually help them through that <clears throat> and most of the time after the first you know couple of weeks of sitting down and talking about the benefits of this and that and actually taking them out onto a, onto the field <clears throat> or onto the factory doing health and safety tours with them and um, taking them through the, the whole process, they actually come on board pretty quickly <clears throat> because what they realize is when you do health and safety well, you manage well. <clears throat> so if people can manage health and safety, they can manage and it actually makes their life easier. Mm. Is part of it trying to get people who aren't maybe health and safety professionals on board, maybe getting, like you say, the line managers a bit more involved in it, the site managers a bit more involved in it to try and make, make sure that they're doing health and safety right as well. Yeah, definitely. The amount of sites that I've been to where health and safety is the responsibility of the health and safety guy or girl. Um, and that's just not, not how you, you have a, a, a business who is mature in health and safety. Everybody has to play their part. Everybody has to contribute to health, safety, and environmental performance. And that, that starts from, you know, people that are working on the front line to team leaders, to supervisors, to managers. Everybody has to do their part in health and safety. But one thing that I do find in most companies that I go into is it's not clearly defined what they're meant to do. There is an expectation that they do health and safety, but there is no... There's no set KPIs or targets for them for health and safety. There'll be multiple targets for performance when it comes to, you know, manufacturing or tonnage or getting projects done, but not so much in health and safety. And part of the, the culture change or the transformation is actually making sure these people in these roles have defined roles and responsibilities and they're being held to account on them. In terms of the roles and responsibilities of people who aren't health and safety professionals, what kind of targets should they be looking at? Is it similar to the ones that health and safety professionals have? Um, it should be, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, the health and safety professional shouldn't be expected to go out and do seven audits in a week, for example. Mm -hmm. um, the managers, supervisors, they need to be getting involved in these audits as well. Um, you shouldn't need a health and safety professional to walk around your part of your work and tell you if you're doing something right or not. That should just be everyday work. Um, so the, the, the managers, the supervisors, the team leaders all have to play their part. Um, but again, depending on what industry you're in and what sector you're in, that looks different. Um, so when you're working in food, for example, the team leaders and managers should be doing hygiene walkarounds. They should be, you know, doing audits. They should be doing safety conversations. Um, they should be getting involved in incident and accident investigations if you do have one. It's not just the health and safety guy's responsibility. It's everybody's responsibility. And I think it's a very old-fashioned way of thinking that health and safety belongs to a health and safety professional when it doesn't. Hundred um, percent, and I mean, 
I feel like people are getting a bit or more on board with health and safety. You know, even at the health and safety con conferences, you know, we find people tuning in, particularly online, who aren't health and safety professionals, who are just managers trying to incorporate as part of their job. Um, so looking at the transformation process, we've got the initial step. We know how we're getting people on board. Uh, we know how we're going to work out where they are. What's the next step after that? So the next step is to find out where you want to go. Um, we touched on this briefly before. If you want to be best in class, if you just want to move up to like a well-rounded performer in health and safety. Um, and once you establish that, it's quite easy because all you have to do is make a plan. Mm. Um, and I spoke about this at the Health and Safety Congress. It's, it's really breaking down a plan of how you're going to get from point A to point B. And it's as simple as that. Um, there's different elements in a plan. Um, obviously, when it comes to health and safety transformation, you're looking at multiple levels within health and safety management from your management system, so your paperwork side, for example, um, roles and responsibility of people, um, KPIs, leading and lagging indicators. It's all these types of things that you would incorporate into your plan to try and move your 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 business from point A to point B, but it also shifts your culture as well because you're getting more people involved. You're, you're getting a greater understanding and a greater um, importance of health and safety performance within the business. And once people have reached um, their defined end goal, whether it be a case of being best in class or just a well-rounded organization, what can they do to stay there, to make sure that they're not slipping back into old habits. Yeah, and that's, that's one um, one issue that people do have is, one, they'll get to where they want to go and then they'll want to go further. And how do they do that? Mm -hmm. um, but some companies are quite happy to get to point B, which might be good or might be excellent, might be best in class, but how do you then maintain that? Um, and again, that's just working up a plan a maintenance plan the same same if you if you were on a diet for example yeah and you you wanted to lose x amount of weight when you get to the weight point that you want to be how do you maintain it it's the same thing with health and safety it's just having a plan in place that's well maintained and a lot of it is a lot of it is having a simple effective efficient process to manage it um a lot of companies that i have been in in the past have health and safety management systems so They've got paperwork coming out of their ears mm. for absolutely everything. And it's just not required. Have a simple, easy to follow health and safety management system and a process. And when you get to point B, it'll take care of itself. And if people are doing what they're meant to be doing and they're being held to that, there's no reason why you should slip back. I think we've covered some brilliant stuff there matt um i'll finish on a question that i ask all of our guests in health and safety what makes you passionate about the industry what gets you out of bed in the morning and brings you you to work i think the 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 challenge is one um i i absolutely love the challenge of of going into a new business and, and taking them on this journey um but it's also some sometimes when you're talking to people and they get this light bulb moment when they actually think yeah that that's really going to help me or that's going to make my life so much easier um i really get a lot of satisfaction from 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 seeing people um come to that realization that health and safety is actually something that's there to help and support them in their career and it's not a it's not something that you know it, it's not something that stops them from doing work. It's actually an enabler. Mm. And if it's managed properly, it can actually help in a number of aspects in your business. And obviously something that keeps me getting up in the morning is when, when I deliver these projects and the company that I'm working for actually gets to where they want to go, when they get there and they're performing well and, and, everybody is doing their part for health and safety it's the morale of a business just lifts mm. and it's quite a it's quite a euphoric moment to stand there and actually think that you've been a part of it and this business is now in a good place and you can move on to your next project so 
Well, thank you very much for your time today, Matt. And we look forward to welcoming you back to the HSC Note podcast soon. Oh, thank you very much, David. And it's been a pleasure. And I look forward to coming back and having some more discussions with you. 100%. Take care.